Don't forget to go to ashkicking.com for pound for pound the best home health and beauty fragrance products. Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze from Wilder, and you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation, baby. Hey, Anthony, would you say outside of yourself that Deontay Wilder is the, the next best heavyweight next to you or, or someone else, or yeah, what order no, would you put him in? I've got, I've got to say Wilder because he's a champion, and you have to show that respect. So for sure, he's had, he's had multiple defenses, and he's proven himself at the top level, so yeah, I'll say Wilder's up there. Okay. Along with some other names, but Wilder's definitely, definitely up there for sure. I just want to know one question. I hope somebody got the answer for me. I just want to know what the hell is going on in the heavyweight division. What is going on? I just woke up to multiples of articles where Josh was stating that he's just not mentally, physically, emotionally ready for me. That it may take up to 2020 until he can build up the courage to really fight me. Basically talking about getting me old. And don't you know this black don't crap? I ain't get old no time soon. Trust me. Trust me. Is these guys that scared? I keep telling y'all guys over and over again. I'm the most feared. Again, I repeat, I am the most feared heavyweight in the division. These, man, none of these champions, the best, don't want they owe to go. They don't want to lose that record. And then Hearns talking about he'll knock me out in three. Then make the motherfucking fight then. Why you scared? It's either two things. Either y'all scared or y'all doping too. Which one is it? Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So first things first, uh, that clip you guys uh, seen me interviewing Anthony Joshua, that was uh, it was a couple months back. That was like before the Mayweather-McGregor uh, fight. It was way before that, actually. And the reason why I bring that up is because recently, you guys, for those of you guys who haven't been following the news, you just heard Deontay Water himself. He just basically quoted what Anthony Joshua has recently said about facing Deontay Wilder. And just like Wilder said, Anthony Joshua, he said he won't be forced into fighting Deontay Wilder. He could, it may take a couple years, it may take to 2020 until he feels comfortable and confident to get in the ring and go up against the bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. This is one of the most stunning admissions I've ever heard a heavyweight champion make. Not even a heavyweight champion, a champion in general. This is shocking to me. I mean, it came out of nowhere, just like Deontay Wilder had just said. Eddie Hearn had just recently said that Anthony Joshua would knock out Wilder in three rounds. So to, so to hear Eddie Hearn say that, Anthony Joshua's promoter, and then you basically hear Anthony Joshua basically retract what his own promoter said. This gives me the impression that even Eddie Hearn was a little surprised and taken back when he heard his own fighter, Anthony Joshua, say, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not ready for that fight yet. I mean, why else would Eddie Hearn just come out of nowhere and say, Anthony will knock him out in three rounds? I mean, this is very shocking, guys. You're supposed to be the heavyweight champion of the world. When you're the heavyweight champion of the world, when you're a champion, when you're a world champion, you're supposed to be ready for everyone, right? How can you be a champion and not be ready for a particular opponent? I mean, this is something else. I mean, you got the man who calls himself King Kong Ortiz, who he got caught doping to prepare himself for Deontay Wilder which now and I have to agree with Wilder he must have had some type of fear he had a serious amount of respect let's put it that way for Deontay Wilder the fact that he felt he had to mask PEDs to get in the ring with Deontay Wilder right so you had Wilder or you had Ortiz basically cheating now you have Anthony Joshua saying he doesn't know if he can beat Deontay Wilder. Wow. That is a hell of an admission. 
that coincidental list is no damn joke, guys. I'm serious. Because Deontay Wilder, this man has challenged. He paid money. He paid money to, to uh, Bermain Stavern, step aside money, to face the most dangerous heavyweight in the division, at least perception-wise, Luis King Kong Ortiz. He paid money to face this guy when he didn't even have to. That guy fails a drug test, and now he can't fight. He's out of the runnings, right? Deontay Wilder has been calling out Anthony Joshua since day one. Anthony Joshua comes out and says, I'm not ready for that guy yet. You guys can't force me to do something that I'm, I don't want to do. Basically what Anthony Joshua is saying now, right? Like somebody, you know, threatened to push him off a ledge or something. And yet, despite us knowing all of these facts, Deontay Wilder is still being received the way any other fighter on the coincidental list would be treated and received. Like a Floyd Mayweather, like an Andre Ward, like a Guillermo Rigo. Deontay Wilder is doing every single thing that a boxing fan is supposed to admire and respect. But because he's not on the hope list, he's not getting that type of Golovkin reception. See, what decafs love to do, they love to stick to their talking points so that they can feel comfortable with their hate and disdain for fighters on the coincidental list. And what that basically means is, you know how they used to say, oh, Wilder, all he does is fight bums, etc., etc. But when Wilder starts to challenge and call out the fighters that you guys said he wouldn't, they still use the same old talking points regardless if Wilder is fighting a quote-unquote bum or he's fighting Luis Ortiz, right? They continue to use the same old stale talking points because that is therapeutic. That makes them feel comfortable with their hate because if they come flat out and they just say, I don't like that black bastard, then they know they'll be exposed as a racist, et cetera, et cetera. So they have to stick with some type of stale ass talking point that no longer applies. Same thing with Guillermo Rigo, right? There was a time when they were saying, oh, Guillermo Rigo, he's boring. And that's why I don't like him, right? Then all of a sudden, Guillermo Rigo, he comes out of nowhere. He knocks out two to three opponents back to back to back, breaking jaws with one single punch. Then he had the fight against the giant Amagaza, which was candidate for fight of the year, where Rigo, he actually put himself in harm's way to where he got knocked down in a fight, rallied back, and stopped the giant, right? So after Rigo gives these fans, who claim they didn't like him because he was boring, after Rigo gives these fans exactly what they asked for, what do they say after that? They still say he's boring. That's because that's a cold word. That's because once again, they're using that as an excuse for why they really don't like him. So going back, Deontay Wilder, you say he's fighting bums. Deontay Wilder, he challenges Anthony Joshua and he challenges King Kong Ortiz. They still say he's a cherry picker, right? Regardless if he gives them what they are asking for. Rigo, he's boring. Soon as he gets knockouts, soon as he gets knocked down in action packed fights, they still say he's boring. Floyd Mayweather, they say he's a runner. You ever notice that? Floyd Mayweather, he can stand right in front of you like he did against the much bigger, much stronger, much younger Canelo Alvarez, and they still call him a runner. Why? Because it's therapeutic for them. Because if they cannot use that excuse, then they have to look at themselves in the mirror and say, wait a minute, it's not Floyd Mayweather, it's me. And they don't want to do that. They don't want to have to do that. You feel me? So that's what the coincidental list is all about. It is always the opposite of reality that these decafs are trying to project in their narrative. But at the end of the day, as I always say, you can lock the truth up, throw away the key, and that truth is going to find a way to break free. Reality always smacks these decafs in the face. We know what time it is at the end of the day. 
that's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one.